Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Wiggins to come video, we have a plethora of rumours for the RX Vega series of graphics cards. Navi, which is the successor even to Vega. Zen Plus, which is the, of course, successor to the Ryzen Plus series of CPUs. And then finally, we're going to turn our attentions to Intel's X299 platform, which is Intel's um, platform of choice for the pro consumer market, also known as HEDT or High Performance Desktop. Anyway, with that said, let's begin with Vega and perhaps the most depressing piece of news, assuming it's accurate, and we'll go into that in just a second, and that is that Vega will have less than 20,000 units at launch. In fact, 16,000 is the number that's being touted by Tweaktown. So the reason behind this, at least according to the website, is pretty simple. It is down to HBM2 being limited in supply and expensive to manufacture and produce and therefore to sell to end customers. Numbers are basically limited. Therefore, scarcity plus rarity drives up not just the production of the card, but also produces a finite limit on how many they can actually release. Now, there are a couple of caveats for this. Firstly... Any GPU, especially on a new architecture, is kind of limited upon release. I mean, I, I, I can ha I can remember it happening way back in the day. Um, for example, the 8800 GTXs were pretty rare on launch. Even the GeForce 3s, the 500s, I believe, were quite rare. And also, for example, going way back even further than that, the Voodoo 3 3500s were very difficult to procure. Um, certain PCIe, PCI, excuse me, uh, Voodoo cards were pretty difficult. And if we want to go forward a little bit, even the X800s, if you remember that far back for ATI, were very difficult to get hold of the uh, X350s and also the X800 XTs, I believe, were also quite difficult. I'm sorry, not the X350s, X850s. So this is not new. It's been happening for a number of years in the GPU industry. The problem is, it does have a negative impact upon consumers, because we, ex of course, expect to just be able to order the thing, go to, like, Dabs or, e you know, to eBuyer or to, you know, Overclockers UK or Amazon or whatever your retailer of choice is, and just be able to order one or two of these things, no problem. And that kind of makes things a bit tricky for AMD. Now, obviously, I'm not reporting this is actually true. I'm reporting it as a rumor. So that's for A. And for B, if it is true... It's going to be a bit difficult because let's say, and obviously we don't know the performance of Vega, but let's say it is faster than the 1080 tire. Let's say it's 15% faster, but you've just built a new PC. Okay, well, let's just say you have done that, but then there's very limited quantities available upon launch. Question is, are you A, going to say, well, gee, I'm just going to wait a month or two and buy Vega, or B, are you just going to say, screw it, I'm just going to buy the 1080 tie and then whatever graphics card is fastest, you know, in 12 months, I'll buy that. Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. At the end of the day, it is just a rumour at the moment, so let's give it the benefit of the doubt. We don't know the pricing. We don't know if this is even going to trickle down, because another question is, are all of Vega's graphics cards going to be HBM2? Are some going to be, for example, GDDR5X? Some rumours tell us yes. Many rumours tell us no. Ultimately, until it's revealed, well... <laughs> yeah, I think you can kind of guess where I'm going with that. Talking of revealed, a, another rumor that's doing the rounds at the moment, and this is from WCCF Tech, a number of you have wanted me to cover this one, uh, messages galore, I tell you, is that on May the 16th, so not exactly far into the future, AMD will be taking the covers off, to use the headline, of Vega, Navi, and Zen Plus. So, just so we're all very abundantly clear, most of this is going to be roadmap and very small numbers of details we can make assumptions because Vega obviously is the soon to be current architecture from AMD whenever the hell it's released. Navi is a successor after that and according to roadmaps it's at least a year later. It's looking more like minimum 18 months. I mean Vega looked like it was originally touted to be very early 2017, perhaps late 2016. That didn't happen. Navi was situated to be some, some time excuse me, in 2018. So when that happens, we don't know. From what we understand, Vega uh, is going to be 14 nm, yet Navi is going to shrink down possibly to 7 nm. 
Um, Pinnacle Ridge slash Zen 2, also known as Zen Plus, however, was also going to be discussed. If I had to take a guesstimate, there's probably going to be very generic details to say something like our target is release date of X, our performance target is Y, the memory technologies perhaps are whatever, and there might be some information as well as to what their vision of the future is regarding the graphics cards, what they feel, you know, scalability is or whatever. Because, well, that's one of the things on the slides, scalability. I would love to know what they mean by that. What does scalability mean? Because originally I thought of something like multiple graphics cards, but that doesn't make much sense. Um, it doesn't make much sense as well when you factor in that scalability could be across a variety of different platforms, because obviously Polaris is in a variety of different platforms. So unless we're not looking at it in the same way they are in those contexts, then they're talking about something else. And I've tried to get information out of AMD regarding that. Unsurprisingly, not so much giving it to me. So let's face it, not surprising. Speaking of not surprising, Zen 2, also known, and future Zen Plus cores, are supposedly going to be worked on over the next several years. Now, future architectures um, from uh, the Zen family, I guess you could say, are going to be basically Zen, but with optional changes. We don't know what the final name is going to be for these, pro for these processors. For all we know, it could be called, I don't know, Jelly Bean Central. But what we do understand from what AMD have told us, uh, not just us, but, you know, members of the press generally, as well as, of course, on forums or whatever else, is that they're not just looking for a small jump in performance. They're looking for, you know, 40%. Um, that's a lot. Now, whether they can get that, I don't know. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. If, if they can get anywhere near even, like, 20%, but with higher clock speeds, I'd be pretty happy. One issue with Zen is that the clock speeds are not quite where you'd expect them to be if you compare it to an Intel processor, which naturally does have some impact upon single-thread performance. It's just kind of how it is. So, all Zen CPUs do generally top out in the low 4 gigahertz. This is Regardless whether, for example, you've got 1700, 1700X, 1800X, whatever, generally it will top out at around the 4, maybe 4.2 gigahertz range. <clears throat> Obviously, your mileage will definitely vary depending on the uh, motherboard you're using, the RAM you're using, the mother, um, sorry, the cooling you're using, that type of stuff. But and of course, silicon lottery. But Overclocking and clock speed for Zen is not quite as aggressive as perhaps what we'd hoped for. So maybe with future revisions, we can possibly get it down to about 4.5 gigahertz. That plus perhaps some other changes in architecture, and we could be looking at some really kick-ass performance. Finally, let's talk about Intel, shall we, and the X299 platform. Rumors are swirling like, I don't know, massive hurricanes, vortexes, if you will. Perhaps slightly overselling it, but still, that the new platform X299 will debut at the PC gaming show, specifically on the 12th of June. Now, from what we understand, there's going to be a plethora of different information that's released, um, and we possibly should get looks at Kaby Lake X as well as Skylake X. There's already been some naughty teasers that have popped up, for example, MSI. They have called it the best motherboard ever. And although we don't get a full board shot, it's pretty obvious that there are a multitude of different art, um, LEDs for RGB. Pretty much so many that you could possibly run this as a bloody disco. And there are a ridiculous number of PCIe 3.0 sensors, four of them. And they are very nicely spaced indeed. And you've also, between those, got M.2 slots. So basically, this thing is perfectly positioned for a high-end desktop to be able to run multiple graphics cards. Yes, if you want to do a lot of gaming. But even if you wanted to do like a lot of modeling, a lot of video encoding, or whatever else, or virtual machine work, well, by golly gosh, you're not going to have any I.O. problems whatsoever with this at all which really comes down to the platform itself. 
Speaking of which, there are also some details with Basin 4s that have leaked onto the internet. Now, I have been over this multiple times before, but I do want to spend just a few minutes kind of retreading old ground just for those who don't know what it is. So there's going to be an up to 12 core chip, which is going to be the flagship, and that is going to be based upon the Skylake X architecture. From what we can understand, this is going to be running at 140 watts, and it's going to boost at up to about 4 gigahertz, possibly slightly lower for the low, for the higher core models. Uh, obviously, we're going to see support for massive numbers of PCIe lanes. We've already discussed that previously. Cable Lake X is going to be a bit different. From what we understand, given the rumors, although there has been some ambiguity on this, but it does appear that Cable Lake X is only going to support dual-channel RAM, but the native speed is going to be up to 2667 megahertz. And finally, Basin Falls, in terms of I.O. Connecti connectability, excuse me, 10 USB slots, 8 USB uh, 2.0 slots, so 10 USB 3.0, 8 USB 2.0, loads of SATA frees, of course, Intel's LAN, and there's going to be also um, multiple HD audio, uh, SM buses, LPC, and God knows whatever else. Perhaps the strangest thing, however, is Cable Lake X, and I've said this multiple times you know, in just about every video, because it's really curious we're seeing a 4-core processor with 8 threads, never mind the i5-7640K, which is going to just have, of course, 4 threads. It's really bonkers to me that Intel are doing this, but it is what it is. I, I can assume this is going to be for folks who just want to kind of get the platform and more need the I.O. rather than the actual chip. I don't know how many people is going to really be doing that, but it is what it is. The clock speeds are basically identical. It's got 4.5 gigahertz boost. It's still got three, uh, 8 megabytes excuse me, of level 3 cache. The only real difference is the TDP is 112 watts. It's just a bit bizarre, to be frank. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Normal stuff like or don't like depending on if you like the video or not i guess uh comment uh subscribe if you've not already done so and don't forget that bell icon i'll see you soon take care bye for now